What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I was tagged by my buddy Randy, the channel fragrance dude. I will have him tagged below if you want to go check out his channel and give him a subscribe, check out his content. He started this tag called the 12 Days of Christmas. So what fragrances would I pick to leading up to the 12 Days of Christmas? Interesting tag. I'm down for it. Um, I have my 12 picked. It's varied. It's variety. Some of them I actually absolutely plan on wearing. I might end up doing this actual rotation for the 12 days leading up to Christmas. Because like the last two is definitely what I'm wearing Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So I'm actually pretty excited to do this one. Thanks for the tag, Randy. Stay tuned. So, number 12 on the 12th day of Christmas, or I think it's the other way around, the first day of Christmas, I don't, I don't know. Uh, point being, I picked this one up recently, and I've yet to do a full wearing, so what better time than the 12 days of Christmas rotation to pull out Stronger With You Oud. So, speaking of Randy, Randy had sent me a decant of this, that was how I was able to sample it first. No secret that I love this DNA. Now, this is more uh, leather, dry, spicy wood forward. Probably the biggest departure in the line. While still smelling like Stronger With You, it's a different take. Oh, but I'm here for it. Spicy, woodsy, a little rough and tumble. I love it. It's great. I've been meaning to put it in rotation. I wore leather last week, which I'm so glad. I bought them at the same time. So glad to have it. And with the crisp, cool weather that's been coming and going, it's the right time. It is the season to wear something like this. So number 12, the first one, is going to be Emporio Armani Stronger With You Oud. On the 11th day of Christmas, I'm going with Boundless from Amouage. Happens to match the shirt I'm wearing. I'll be damned. And the hat. So I haven't wore this one in a while. It's just right, because it's been kind of a cross between sometimes we get somewhat wintry weather to mostly cooler fall weather, and this falls right into that. I like this one for kind of that transition between fall and winter type of weather. Um, this is a very orange-heavy, resinous, earthy tobacco. There's some sweetness here, but I love the oriental tie-in, the, you know, the DNA for Amouage, very present here. Just a banger of a fragrance. I mean, Amouage is just greatness. They everything. Not every single fragrance, because I can't say that because I haven't tried every fragrance, but every fragrance I have, total stunner, absolute banger, home run. You just insert the analogy or what you would like to say to talk about how good the damn fragrance is. That's the case here. Great performer. Uh, super masculine, but very mass appealing while still having that, like I said, that oriental Middle Eastern touch that they are known for. Just a wonderful option at number 11, Amouage Boundless. And on the 10th day of Christmas... The supposedly discontinued Azaro Porom Intense, which that saddens me to hear if that is the case. I would love for this to, there we go, to focus. Because this is gorgeous. This is that timeless, spicy, aromatic aftershave smell with a sweet, boozy brandy, heavy dose of cinnamon. Makes it even spicier. It's so good. Great performer, cozy, super masculine with a little bit of playfulness because of that boozy note, that sweet boozy note of brandy. This is such a great fragrance. This is my favorite Azaro Porom flanker. I, it came out in 2015, I believe. I got it for like 35 bucks. It was a straight up cheapie for so many years. Eight to 10 hours, solid, easy, like eight hours is undershooting it. It's more like 10 hours every time I've ever worn it. Great for the winter. Like I said, very warm, spicy, cozy, boozy. But super masculine at the same time, this is such a good one. I need to throw it in the rotation. And like I said, I think I'm going to try to adhere to this. Like for the 12 days leading up, I'm going to hold myself accountable. And this is going to be the 12 days. I'm going to take this tag pretty seriously. I'm really, this is going to be the rotation, guys. Because uh, I've got some bangers here. And at number 10, banger number 10 is a Zara Porom Intense. On the ninth day of Christmas, this one was sent to me by Twisted Lily recently. I've worn it twice so far. This is such a fun, kind of quirky, resinous fragrance to me. This is Andrea Mac Magma. Really been digging this. Uh, they had asked me to pick something from the brand. I picked this based on the notes. Resins, sweetness, smoky, a little funky. I, I love it. I love it. It's so good. Because I love resinous fragrances this time of year. And I just would love to throw it back in the rotation. 
I haven't done a full review on it yet, so I've been spending time with it. And it's magnificent. Totally worth a sample for those of you that like frankincense, which this time of year is kind of my go-to is frankincense. Number nine, Andrea Mack Magma. On the eighth day of Christmas. So this is really popular since released. Uh, it doesn't stay in stock. I'm sure it'll come back in stock, but I'm super happy to have it. I think it's my favorite Paris Corner release of the year. It is Care Pistachio. K. Ali Yum Pistachio Gelato Clone inspired by. Has warm cinnamon, sweet rum, minty florals with a pistachio gelato, pistachio ice cream smell. Tomato, tomato, ice cream, gelato. That's how I look at it. It's kind of been what I've been saying. Tomato, tomato, ice cream, gelato. <laughs> not that big of a difference. As far as smell, not that big of a difference. Whipped cream, cotton candy, musk. Just very deep, very rich, but still fresh while being gourmand and delicious dessert-like, which I'm not a big gourmand guy, so I like the floral tie-in. I like the freshness. I like the hint of booze that's fleeting. You get it, it leaves. It doesn't hang out for a long time. It just pops in to say hello on the holidays, but has other engagements and other places to visit for Christmas. That's this kind of, that's the booze in this fragrance. Damn, that smells good, though. It does lean a touch feminine, but huh. it's a fluffy fun yet airy minty sweet fragrance has so much going on they really step their game up i've never smelled the original i don't care if i ever smell the original because this is so damn good number eight paris corners care pistachio on the seventh day of christmas we're getting very masculine dark abrasive and aggressive with zaharoff signature leather tobacco oh man i haven't worn this one in a while this is winter only for me this is very in your face. That's a natural color. That is not dye. It is naturally that color. The birch tar shines. This plum in the opening just takes some of that edge off of that rich, warm spice. Smoke, dark leather, moist, earthy tobacco. There's orientals. It's crazy smoky from this birch tar. Warm, spicy, rich. It's so in your face. This is an aggressive fragrance at first. Obviously, it gets smooth. But it's just such a showstopper. I'm such a fan of this fragrance. Um, where it stands right now, Rosé is my number one. This is like 1B. 1A, 1B. I think this is the second most impressive fragrance from the house that's ever been released at the recording of this. Uh, there is something coming soon that might rival this one's place at 1B. But for now, it's 1B. For those of you that like... Leather tobaccos, you like oud, you like dark, smoky, just robust and thick, aggressive statement makers. You'll probably like Zaharoff Signature Leather Tobacco. It's very new to the collection. It's spicy, it's woodsy, and it's drizzled in caramel. Interesting combination for Mancera Silver Blue, which is not a blue fragrance, and the name in this color combo is not matching of the scent profile at all, but the scent profile is fantastic man is this good so i smelled nishane's papi lafico recently and if you were to take the caramel away from this it smells kind of like nishane's papi lafico i immediately thought it took me a second but i figured it out this smells like a caramel heavy take on that so kind of redundant to one another i actually prefer this the caramel note works wonders in here with the spices and that dryness and the woodiness and everything it's really, really good. This is one of my favorite Mancera pickups of the year, and I need to continue spending time with it because I'll be damned. It's absolutely phenomenal. Six was silver blue. On the fifth day of Christmas, what I believe to be, in my opinion, my humble opinion, of course, the best design release of 2023, Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum. I'm such a huge fan of this fragrance. It is so good. Speaking of leather and resins and smoke and spice and all the things I keep talking about that are just so nice for this time of year, this is that jam. This is a great option. It ties that DNA. It makes you realize how sweet and playful the Eau de Toilette is when you smell this. This is the big brother. This is uncle. This is granddaddy to infrared eau de, parf uh, eau de toilette. They're both phenomenal fragrances. They're different personalities. I don't think it's too redundant to have both. I have both. I love both. I've been reaching for this one more, and I want to continue to reach for this one more because it's very much a cozy winter fragrance in a bottle for me. 
Performance is great without being crazy loud. Really good, long-lasting fragrance that doesn't overwhelm. I love stuff like that most of the time. Number five, Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum. From long-lasting and not overwhelmingly strong to long-lasting and overwhelmingly strong, Diorome Parfum. This is the 75 ml. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Leather, woods, waxy iris, beautiful floral leather. This is so good. Creamy sandalwood as it dries. It's a drastic change from the opening. I don't really get the citrus, though. The orange note. That's what heaven must smell like. It's so good. It's so good. Wildly different, but some of you right now are like, oh, I saw your live stream talking about Aaron Terrence Hughes. Ohm. I do love that. There's an argument for that being the two of them, this and ATH Ohm, are, I think are my two favorite iris fragrances I've ever smelled. And they're such different iris fragrances. This is more bad boy, edgy, animalic, and dark. That's bright, powdery, and just easy. So I'll, you get the two of those, I think you have the two best out there. So this is strictly in the winter for me because four sprays is overwhelming. The last time I wore it, I actually only did two sprays because it's that powerful on me. Believe it or not, in the evening this past summer, I wore two sprays and whew, filled this whole apartment with two sprays. So yeah, loud, intrusive, but magical smelling. And number four, Dior Homme Parfum. On the third day of Christmas, I'm totally going to bring this with me on the trip because I will be on my trip back home to Louisiana with these th last three fragrances. And I was already planning on bringing these three fragrances, so these are definitely, even if I was to not stick to the other 12, which I think I'm going to, I was totally going to rock Zaharoff Signature Aurum. Amber Gourmand, Sticky Honey Amber, Cinnamon Bark, Smells Like Cinnamon Sticks, Hazelnut, a touch of coconut milk. It's not really all that lactonic. Uh, warm, spicy, a little nutty, and sticky sweet. And I'm not a big gourmand guy. Like I said when we got to the pistachio fragrance, these are more my style because there's more going on than just smelling like dessert. I like that. <sighs> Raw honey. Raw honey, too. That's the best part. Very animalic smell to it. Natural honeycomb. So... Great. Claude Deer worked his usual magic that he just pulls out with Zaharoff. I mean, we've got two Zaharoff fragrances in this video. Magical stuff, because where I said this was 1B, which is technically second place, that would make this my third favorite from the house. This is phenomenal, and I'm not really a gourmand guy, but when magic happens, magic happens. It is what it is. We're spraying it again. Give me all the sniffs. It's super good. This has been a hit for George. Totally understand why people have been enjoying this. This is an absolute weapon with this crazy thick heavy plate that's on the four ounce. Uh, if you like honey, if you like amber, you like gourmand, which this isn't through and through gourmand, but it's mostly edible smelling, like baklava, you're absolutely going to enjoy this. Third day of Christmas. That's what we're going with, Zaharoff's Signature Aurum. On the second day of Christmas, which will be Christmas Eve, which is when my family typically really does Christmas. Th Christmas Day is more like Thanksgiving over again. It's pretty much like a repeat. It's the same thing. Uh, but may he rest in peace, my dear friend E.J. Wells. This is my favorite creation he's ever made. It is a Christmas fragrance. It is called Om for the Holidays. I mean, the Happy Land guy's even got a Santa hat on. There's mistletoe all over the place. This, now, I'm back-to-back -back days of gourmands this is the only like through and through true gourmand that i absolutely adore it's my favorite coffee fragrance it smells like syrup and waffles with brewing coffee it's absurdly strong it's christmas mission accomplished ej your best work it's so cozy to honor you my friend this is abs. I only wear it in December anyway, but it has so much more meaning this year. We lost EJ this year, for those of you who didn't know. May he rest in peace. Totally, totally rocking this one for Christmas Eve, the second day of Christmas. The atomizer always gets stuck a little bit on this particular bottle, but we're spraying it. Sweet cream, yet dark roasted. Syrup over freshly cooked waffles on a waffle iron. Not egos, like fresh off the waffle iron. 
So good, guys. French toast. Like, I, I visualize all of these things when I smell it, and it's absurdly powerful. Be mindful when you're spraying this one. Second day of Christmas for Christmas Eve. Happy land. Home for the holidays. On the last day of Christmas for Christmas Day, this is such an interesting fragrance that I could see why some people would not like. It's caramel and charred woods is the note breakdown. It's Pasha de Cartier, Noir Absolute. Their newest release. Get this to focus. There we go. Their newest release. I love the changes to the everything. Got Cartier right here. It actually clicks into place now. The atomizer and collar have changed. This is so good. Dark, smoky, charred woods, as it indicates, drizzled with caramel. Has a little bit of this earthy green, fougere-like, maybe even sheep or oak moss kind of thing going that's not listed that I do smell when it dries. Super earthy. Roasted. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's amazing to me. I think this was such a great release for 2023. And I know not everybody feels that way. I can totally smell why my, a lot of people probably won't like this. This is a charming fragrance. This stands out. This is a conversation piece. This is masculine. This is for a fragrance enthusiast. Not someone that's looking for just compliments, though you could totally get some compliments with anything. I may get a compliment for Christmas wearing this, and I may get a, whew, that's smoky. You know, it might be that. I don't know, and I don't care, because I wear stuff for me, and this is amazing. I want to wear something just different, That's because typically I would go after, like, amouage for a Christmas day. But, you know, this impressed me so much that I was like, this this is going to be this Christmas's homage. I'm going to go with Pasha, because last year it was Reflection Man. The year before that was Epic Man. So, like, I typically do homage for this. But we're going with Pasha de Cartier, War Absolute, for the last day of Christmas. Christmas Day. That's my 12 days of Christmas, and I'm going to actually stick to this. It's the 14th as I record this. I would have to st I'm, I'm late already. I'm a day late. So I'm going to do most of this, I guess. Uh, maybe that final week. We'll do the seven days of Christmas. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So leather, tobacco, silver, blue, spice bomb, infrared EDP, Dior Homme Parfum, Signature Orum, Home for the Holidays, Pasha de Cartier Noir Absolute. I'll do those. I don't know. I might. Th I really want to wear this, though. <laughs> I'm going to do the majority of these. I'm definitely going to wear them. Because for anybody that hasn't tried any of these guys, I'll try to have links below. These are all great fragrances in my opinion. That's why I picked them for this tag. I'm going to keep the tag open. I don't like to put any pressure on anyone, but any content creators across any platforms of any styles that sees this tag and wants to do their take on it, tag your it. Have at it. Let me know you did it. I'd love to see what you guys came up with. Once again, thank you, Randy, for tagging me. I have his information down below. He's tagged. Just click his name and head over to his channel. Check out his content. Subscribe if you like what you see. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe over here because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. Uh, what have you tried of my 12 choices? Definitely let me know down below what you think about them. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of my 12 picks and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.